Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephen and I'm a first in natural sciences at Jesus College Cambridge. And within natural sciences, currently I'm studying biology of cells, chemistry, material science and mathematics. The purpose of this video is, is, is to essentially give interview tips for those who have to, for those who have interviews um, for natural sciences at Cambridge. But hopefully this video but hopefully this video will appeal to all those who have any type of interview at any university. So you've just discovered that you have an interview for natural sciences at Cambridge. First of all, Give yourself a pat on the back, that is a massive achievement. However, you can't really celebrate too much because this is arguably the best, sorry, this is arguably the most important part of the application process. As unfortunately, you can't celebrate for too long, it's now time for you to buckle down and prepare for your interview. So obviously, I made it to Cambridge, and so that suggests what? So that suggests that I did something right in my interview. So I just thought it would be only fair for me to, to share with you guys what I personally did. So the, so the instant that I found out that I had an interview, obviously I celebrated, gave myself a little pat on the back, and well, the first thing I did after that was go straight to YouTube. YouTube is arguably your best friend when it comes to preparing for interviews. And my reason for saying this is because YouTube is a very, very powerful resource as it has loads and loads and loads of example interviews, um, you know, for um, undergrads. And more specifically, Oxford and Cambridge love to um, upload interviews. Um, so I believe Oxford has quite a few interviews um, for chemistry and maths. You know, Oxford is a single, Oxford don't do natural sciences, they do um, single sciences. But if let's say if you're applying for physical, let's say if you're applying for um, physical Natsuki, um, that's probably suggests that you did physics, chemistry, and mathematics. I would personally say, okay, therefore look at um, the physical, look at the physics and chemistry interviews at, at Oxford, as well as the maths interviews, and then look at the general natural sciences interview for Cambridge. Look at the maths natural sciences interview for Cambridge, as well as the engineering because that might slightly overlap. That might help. Um, I myself, I applied for physical natural sciences. I applied for physical natural sciences and therefore I personally looked up the chemistry and um, style interviews questions. Um, the chemistry interview um, video by Oxford as, and I looked at all the engineering interviews because that links to mathematics and I looked at all the maths um, interviews. And the reason for doing this is because as a, nat as a, natural, as a natural scientist student, whether you're, whether you're biological or physical, one thing you know, one, one type of question you know you're going to get asked are probably chemistry questions. Um, whether you're biological or physical, I imagine most biological and physical students took chemistry and you're also going to get asked maths questions. That is a guarantee. You will get asked maths questions and so I would suggest that you do uh, spend a lot of your time looking at maths interviews on YouTube. And what I would do is when looking at these interviews, I would pretend that I was actually in the video. I would pretend that I'm the student being interviewed. And so when the interviewer would ask um, the student or give the student a question to answer, I would then pause the video um, give myself, let's say, two minutes and I'll, and I'll try and answer that question. One thing which is imperative that you should do, you should always speak out loud when you're answering questions because your interviewers want to, um, your interviewers don't really care too much whether you get the question right or wrong. What they want to know is how, they want to know your thinking process as because they want to know your thinking process and they want to know how you get to your answer and they also want to see whether you're teachable or not, essentially. And by teachable, what I mean is, if they were to give you a new piece of information, how would you respond to that information? Would you just leave it aside and continue doing your own thing? Or would you take what they said and um, incorporate that into your own um, methodology of working? So after, look at, so after looking at the Cambridge interviews and the Oxford interviews um, videos on YouTube, I then directed myself to Black Pen, to Black Pen Red Pen. Um, he has quite a few videos, which I think are very accessible for most A-level students. I didn't do A level, I did IB, however, I still find it accessible. Um, and so I did personally feel like those interviews, um, I did personally feel that the questions that Black Pen, that Black Pen, Red Pen would go through, you know, his little fun style questions were very similar to Ermis interview style questions. And so I would encourage most people, after looking at all the interview videos, to then go straight to Black Pen, Red Pen. I'm kind of shouting him out, even though he has like millions of subscribers, but yeah. He's, a, he's an amazing YouTuber and honestly his videos help you um, not just with the interviews but just building um, but you know just gaining more knowledge about mathematics essentially and you learn different approaches and how do you answer you know different types of questions you know he massively helped me for my interview he massively helped me for my interview in, indirectly like he doesn't know like he doesn't know that he helped me but honestly I remember I got asked a question which was very similar um, to your question that he went through and you know I used his approach to that question to get an answer right and you know it must have worked because look at me, I'm here now. One thing which is really, really important is that you have 100% knowledge. That might sound really scary, but it is important that you have 100% knowledge, I believe anyway, of all your A-level subjects. There can't really be any gap between your knowledge because, you know, 
what I found in my interview is that they were all the very, very, very um fine needle questions, which you don't learn too much um during the A level. You almost overlook it. Like they will teach, like they will tell you, they will mention it. However, you won't go into depth, and you won't go into depth. You would almost you will almost essentially brush over it. So they will just tell you this very fine needle of information, but they won't, you know, they won't elaborate on it. And so, so essentially, you brush over it. It's very important that you have a hundred percent knowledge with um for all your A level subjects. And that just makes your um, interview a lot easier as opposed to them asking a question and then you having to think heavily about how to get the answer. It's almost nice if you just know the answer straight away because you know you have complete knowledge of your A-level um, subjects. Another thing that I found helpful was reading my personal statement. So within my personal statement, um, I imagine like most typical physical natural sciences student, there was a, um, a little portion speaking about quantum mechanics. Um, I had a feeling they were asking a question related to that. And they did. Well, also didn't ask me to speak about quantum mechanics, like um, you know, what type of reading I've done around it. They did ask my question related to quantum mechanics, and so I would say if you've spoken about any topics that you're heavily um, interested in within your personal statement, definitely go over it, look at those topics, and find questions related to it because that's what I did. And you know, it's almost like I cheated the system. I put a topic which I know I found quite interested in. I then looked at questions related around that topic, so related around quantum mechanics, which were almost um, pre-uni stuff. You know, with the assumption that they were, with, with with the assumption that they would then ask me pre-uni stuff questions. Um, and by pre-uni, I essentially mean either A level, first year, or just in between, so bridging the gap between A levels um, to university. So those type of level questions. And it worked because they did ask me a question related to quantum mechanics, which wasn't insanely difficult. It was something that, you know, an A-level student or a first year undergraduate or someone in between could do. So I would definitely encourage you guys to look at your personal statement, look at any topics you said you were heavily interested in, and essentially just go over, you know, any type of questions, um, which are, any, any type of questions, um, you know, around that topic, essentially. Another thing that I did, I you know, I'm pretty sure not so not sure if they if they still do it, but they should tell you who your interviewers are. I think it would be quite bizarre if they didn't tell you. Um, so the moment I was was got the email, I literally researched who my interviewers were. The reason why I did that is because well, it's always nice to know who's interview. It's always nice to know who's interviewing you, but also a lot of the interviewers are researchers, and chances are, you know, you know the common stereotype about researchers. They love to talk about their research because obviously. They spend they, they spend a large chunk of their lives researching a certain topic. I found, and well, once again, I took the assumption that my that my interviewers would talk about their research. Obviously, they would dumb it down for me, so they'll ask a very low they'll ask a very like low level question, but still related to the research. So I think one of my researchers, sorry, I think one of my interviewers, um, not sure if I can tell you this. I think one of my interviewers does some research in solid in solid state chemistry. I so said I did look at solid state chemistry. And see what topics within A level were added at IB, but what topics within IB relate to solid state chemistry, and lo and 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 lo and behold, when when I had a, when I had my interview when when I had my interview with that specific interviewer, um, they asked me a question related to solid state chemistry. Um, so yeah, this isn't one hundred percent true. You, you might you know, your interviewers um. Are, are are at the top of the field, so they have knowledge of, across the whole range of science uh, so chances so it's not guaranteed essentially that they will ask you a question related to their topic related to their field but they might and so just so you have that advantage i would encourage you to not spend too much time but literally just look at look at your interviewers see what they do and you know research their topic and see um, if there's any topic within your a-level syllabus or your ib syllabus or any type of syllabus which, which relates to that topic essentially so the next thing is to practice with your teachers and practice with friends. Obviously, you know, it's great, you know, practicing by yourself, you know, speaking out loudly and doing questions, but you need to have almost someone asking new questions because that is that is a completely different experience. Um, I imagine most of your interviews are going to be online. I think, I, yeah, I imagine it will be online. So, um, yeah, honestly, <clears throat> make sure you practice with your friends, with teachers or any type of academic or even your parents might be helpful. Your parents don't even need to know um, anything about your degree, about science. Um, but what one thing you want to make sure is that when they ask you those questions, they're able to follow your steps essentially. Obviously, the, obviously they're not going to truly understand what you're doing, 
but if they have some type of understanding of what you're doing based on how you're answering the question and, and, and how you're explaining it that just indicates that you're doing a really good that indicates that you're doing a really good job essentially so yeah i would definitely encourage you to to practice with your friends your parents and your teachers finally whilst this is probably obvious be confident you know your interviewers will understand you know it's you know you, yeah your interviewers will understand if you're shy if you're hesitant however you don't want to sit there and not speak for five minutes you, i don't want to say you'll fail i don't want to say you'll fail your interview but you, you know it's pretty awkward if there's a little flat even a 10 even a 10 second silence is very very awkward chances are your interviewer will say um excuse me um they'll try to prompt you to talk essentially and so be confident if you're stuck in a question i would encourage you just to ask them sorry i don't really understand this could you could you um repeat the question or even once again even if you are completely stuck just say something it might you might think it's stupid but it's better uh, it's better to say something and show okay th these are the thoughts that are going through my head and if you're lucky not once again this is not guaranteed if you're lucky your you know your interviewer might pick on your interviewer might pick one of those thoughts and say that's a very, that's a very good thought go through this path essentially so yeah those are the those are my interviews tips Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, this is my first video. Um, I do plan to up upload more videos about, you know, productivity, life in Cambridge as a Natsuki, and also um, just, vlogs and gen just vlogs in general. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, there's a little ad coming, you know, personalised ad, but yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time.